Chris Long of the Green Light with Chris Long podcast back here on the program, also uh, inside the NFL on the CW. Christopher, um, how do you beat the Eagles if the Chiefs and the Bills couldn't? <laughs> how do you do it? I don't know, man. These guys, man, these guys are tough. They're just tough. I mean, like, uh, they gave these guys a head start. They they gave them the ball in the first half. I didn't like the offensive game plan, but they are really good at wearing people down. I really do believe that the physicality of this group, even without Lane Johnson, who I thought was a big difference for them, because early in that game, I don't think they felt confident running the ball, getting their, their drive started, except for the touchdown drive. They go five runs, five first downs. The first downs, they came out and ran the ball. In the second half, as things went, and they set some things up, some of their RPOs that in the first half weren't there. They were there in the second half, but it all came down to the run game. You know, that first drive, they come out and they say, hey, screw it. Lane's a right tackle. We are missing him over there. We're going to run the ball left behind Kelsey, um, behind Mylotta. Kelsey's going to be on on the move. We're going to pull him. And I think I counted almost every run in the second half was away from that void that Lane leaves. And they were just so dominant. And to set up those big plays in the red zone, it's like the play to stall, um, the tight end, yeah, the big guy with the lettuce out the back. Um, you know, like they set that up because they got a man look. And earlier in the game, I, on one of the RPOs, I think Jalen got a man look and was a little bit shook by that because they played a lot of zone. And so as the game go goes on, not only are they making the right adjustments, but they're wearing people down and they just will will it to happen. And the tush push is so people are tired of hearing about it, but it's um, it's. It's kind of a, a microcosm of who they are. It's oh, yeah. like so is Hertz. It though. To, so is Hertz, yeah, right? Yeah. So is Hertz, Hertz. So is Suriani. So is Kelsey. I mean, there's so yeah. many of them that personifies the town and the sensibility that Eagles fans want their teams to have. Yeah. Um, and yet, yet it's just it's taken three quarters for that sort of id to kick in on the scoreboard the last two weeks. And now here come the 49ers and the Cowboys. This is it, right? I mean, like, this is it. Whether the, the division or the one seed can be can be wrapped up, essentially. I know there's still four more games to go, but this would be Listen, a differentiator for sure. I'm, I'm not going to pick the game yet because I want to take a deep breath before sure. I pick this Niners game. And, you know, like with my my bias and my homerism, um, it, I acknowledge that. I checked that at the door. But, you know... They played 92, 93 defensive snaps last night, and the effort was great. I mean, Buffalo dominated time possession, the whole thing, in the rain, physical football game. I mean, they go into overtime. Guys are just, you know, they're hanging on. And you've got to play San Francisco now. And that is, they're a trash compactor, man. I, they're so physical. Um, you see what they did to San Francisco the other night. You see what they do when they're at full strength to Jacksonville. They're not going to be able to do that to the Eagles. But this is a challenge from a physicality standpoint, from a matchup standpoint, and just from, uh, hey, we just got done taking 92, 93 plays on defense. And, you know, I got to tip my cap to these guys because they really did make some of the big plays down the stretch. You know, that check, well, it's not a check, but, I mean, like on the second level, you could see that that uh, that pick that Josh threw, and it was that kind of game. It was just we needed one turnover. They're communicating on the back end. If number two breaks out, uh, Bradbury's going to come down and, and steal that ball. And, and, uh, they gave the palm check and went with it. And so I just think whether it's the side or the offense, like this team is so smart, situationally aware, um, you know, even the bad conversions against Josh, which I think was a big deal in the whole thing. I just trust them. And so whether they come out of this thing, one and one, two and oh, oh, and two, they're going to be there in the end. And, you know, I think that Jalen's starting to look healthier, these are these are good signs for them, and they're winning games like this. Not take shots at the Cowboys because you know I actually don't hate the Cowboys. I was only there twice, okay? Like I just hate the Cowboys like everybody else, like normal hate. <laughs> so don't think I'm some like Philly Homer when I give this take. But like the Cowboys, how many times you see them down seventeen seven, you know twenty four fourteen, down again? Like the Eagles had to pull three drives out in the second half against a good team down, and they just continue to do this stuff. So. That's why I trust them down the stretch. Well, I think the Cowboys have joined the Dolphins in the 2023 edition of who have they really beaten? I think that's where they, I mean, I right now. I don't think the Cowboys deserve that. Um, I think the Cowboys are pretty good. I, I mean, I, I'd love to go. It's true. Who have they beaten? But I think the Cowboys are a better team than the Dolphins. I, I just think the Cowboys, 
the Cowboys have to put it together. It's not going to matter if they beat anybody in the regular season. It's always, hey, can the Cowboys beat somebody in January? And so, like, is this team different? We'll find out. But I think they're pretty good. I think they're the third best team in the NFC. But I think the three best teams in the NFC might be better than all the, the best teams in the AFC right now. So I don't know. Yeah, that's an interesting uh, take right there. Uh, but, you know, isn't there something to Chris having to part of your journey in the regular season is beating those teams and no the fact question. that they it, right. And, and, and so I guess a game against Detroit for Dallas that's coming up uh, later on in week 17 is one of them. And and Philadelphia coming into their house like yeah. you kind of again you I know mean, making the playoffs anything can happen but again you've been in these crucible games before do or die I mean the fact that you you know in the third quarter fourth quarter can put your fingers in the dirt or you know the the pellets and 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 know you've already done it in the regular season gives you confidence to do it again. In January or February, no, or that's that's too much. I, I no, I agree with you. I agree with you. I think they got they got their butts kicked when they played San Francisco. That 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 stuck in my head. I think they they took Philly down the wire, and you know, Philly got some calls last night. I got to admit that as a as an Eagles fan, you know, that was a ho- horse collar and that sort of thing. And I Slay got away with some some stuff on the back end, but Dallas will tell you their their fans will tell you, hey, we didn't get every call when we went to the link. I think they're perfectly capable of beating the Eagles, especially at home. I think they're capable of beating any of these teams, but they've just got to go finish it and do it. Um, I don't think they shrink in the big moments. It's not like when I see Miami play somebody, it's like they look totally different, you know, than than their average day at the office. I think Dallas, they just haven't finished these games. And, you know, San Francisco kicked their butts, but they didn't finish that that Eagles game. They've got to finish some of these games. I think they'll be fine. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, like I said, there's three of the best teams in the NFL in the NFC, and it's that's the conversation in the NFC. All right. Uh, it's now time for our weekly uh, Chris Long level of concern part of our segment, including your, your favorite, uh, the production value. <laughs> There it's Chris Long's level of concern. There we go. It's such a big start, you know. It's tough to continue Dude, the that's momentum, awesome. you know. Uh, yeah, it is. Right. It is tough. All right. So the first up are the Buffalo Bills. Your level of concern is what? Well, the ironic thing is, I think they're a really good team, but I don't know if the mask's going to get them in now. Um, I thought they absolutely, when you jump out to that lead, had to have that. Um, you had to have that win. It's backbreaking. But the thing that's so tantalizing for them is they're like, they've looked like a different team offensively. Josh looked like Josh last night. That pick was tough. It wasn't as bad as maybe some of the picks he threw, like backed up against Cincinnati or that sort of thing, where he's just heaving the ball into coverage. But I thought that was as much about the Eagles making a heads up play. Um, But I thought those conversions, him being willing to use his, his legs, and the defense playing a little bit better in spots. Um, I, I'm i not panicked about them because it is what it is. I mean, like, you only panic about a team that you, you, we're past panic with the Bills. Now it's survival. It's not a panic thing. It's a survive thing. Survive. Well, what do you do on a team that is frequently saying what we hear from the Bills, which is we just got to clean up the little mistakes, mm-hmm. you know? We got to clean it up. We just got to play better. We just got to focus and play better. And for fans – you know, fans just want to hear something tangible. They don't want to hear that esoteric stuff. They want to hear, like, oh, that thing can actually get fixed. And as a matter of fact, you know, swapping offensive coordinators is something a fan yeah. can hang their hat on like that. They've already done that. Yeah. And you even pointed out things are better. But what, what 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 do you make of that? How do you? Well, listen, I mean, like, it's like any team. How many teams are not saying that at the end of the year? It, there's only been a couple of these teams that have, have held that trophy over the past five, seven years. And like Josh puts them in a position a lot of times, and sometimes he puts them in a position to lose these games, but he's the reason they're there. So, you know, like I'm just not as, you know, McDermott's tenure has been up and down. There's been some disappointing moments like this year alone. Like I, I didn't like the calls at the end of that, that Broncos game, right? Why'd you heat them up? That sets up the game winning field goal. Right. Um, I thought that there were some things that they could have done differently last night, but uh, more than anything, they just had some injuries on defense that put them in this position. And obviously the coordinator thing, they fixed it, but it, it might be a little bit too late. And so, you know, for, for Bills fans, I know it's tough to hear that week after week, 
but special teams is the one thing you can control. Uh, I think they've lost a number of games on special teams uh, this year alone. Yeah, I just mentioned the Denver game. You know, um, 12, 12 men on the field, the Jets game with the punt return. Uh, then last night, you, you you get a field goal blocked, and albeit a bad call set that up before the half, and in the second half, you come out and you miss another field goal. So they're little things, but they are the difference in the game, and it's James Cook dropping a ball. If James Cook catches that ball, I don't even think we're talking about this game in the same way. It's what's the panic meter on the Eagles, as we inevitably would. I, I think it, it, it's making those plays that are there to make, and um, – I don't know what to tell Bills fans. I mean, it might be a next year thing, but as long as you have Josh Allen and a coordinator that can actually get the most out of him, I feel like you're going to be in the conversation every year. This is a, this is not a, everybody gets one thing, dude. You know, it's, (laughs) you know, it's like not every fan base is going to get to cash in on this awesome window, whether it's Cincinnati or whether it's Josh Allen or whether it's the Ravens with, with Lamar, like, most of these guys are going to be sitting up there at the end of their tenures and saying, Hey, why didn't we get a ring out of this? Um, so I, I'm not going to pick mm-hmm. on them necessarily, but uh, I do think they've, they've, they put themselves in a spot where they can't lose anymore. Your level of concern, Chris long for the Detroit lions. Hi. Hi. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah, I am. And like, I love the lions. I'm the, I, you know, like not that we talk game about first thing I did this off season, put the, the lions over win total hammered it. Okay. So love the lions. Big fan of Dan Campbell, love Jared Goff's story, but I've been saying this for a month now because they haven't played good football in a month. I mean, you, you, uh, you're you thinking, oh, what about the Chargers game? Yeah, it's not a complete game. You let that team that scored 10 points last night at home go up and down the field. It was like a big 12 track meet from like, um, you know, days of Mike Leach. And, it, you know, you had to get a stop to win and you never really got that turnover. And again, the same thing, in a lot of these games defensively, they, they haven't had a bunch of sacks the the past month or two of the season. They're not very talented outside of a couple guys defensively. And I'm not saying they're a bad group of players. They just have to have more blue chip guys if they want to play like this. And the main issue is, and we saw this and we've seen it, whether it was red zone, bad pick for golf against Vegas or, you know, all the turnovers against Chicago or this week, which was really concerning, which is, is an in, in division team, right? And it's Jordan Love, who, if he wins this job, he's not going anywhere. This was not fluky. That you just got beat. You know what I mean? And um, and this team's not going anywhere in the division. So on a macro level, I'm concerned, you know, more than I was before because you thought, hey, they got this thing on lock. Like Chicago might ship Justin Fields. Green Bay doesn't know who their quarterback is. Kirk Cousins is hurt. But on a on an in season level, they can't lose any more games if they want to make a run because they have to play at home. And and that pass rush from Green Bay got after him. I really love Rashawn Gary. It was great for him to have that game on Thanksgiving. But Jared Goff off the spot is a concern. And so if you're going to go outside, and this is the best way I can put it, you watch that game right, and you think about where they're trying to go, and then you sit in your in your chair and you watch the other two games the rest of Thanksgiving. Dallas has defensive ends who run down on punt. Okay. They've got Micah Parsons. They've got Demarcus Lawrence. They will, they will tear you apart. And it's the same thing with the Niners. So all you had to do there, if you're a Lions fan, is you lose that first game, you look at the way you look against pressure and guys who can get after you. And if that offensive line doesn't have it, is isn't good, then what's your identity, right? You couldn't, you couldn't protect Jared Goff. He's not great off the spot. Look at where you're going to have to go to win a Super Bowl. You know, you're going to have to go to San Francisco if you play like this the rest of the season. You're going to have to go to Dallas. You're going to have to go to Philly. Don't love the chances. Not with what I've seen the last month. Oh, man. Last one for you, Chris, is uh, let's revisit your level of concern on the Steelers now that their offensive coordinator changed. Their offensive coordinator changed, um, you know, gave positive results and just won. One game over 400 yards. I thought, mm-hmm. I thought you guys would never ask, uh, Rich. Yeah, you know, Chris. last last week people were like, Chris, what are you? <laughs> why wouldn't you panic about these guys? They're the Steelers. They're gonna slide in. They're gonna they're gonna win a few of these games down the stretch. They love rock fights, and the way they played offensively yesterday, I don't know if they're gonna be in a rock fight every game. They had 400 yards total offense. You know, it's it's the first time they've had that in a number of games. So it's not a coincidence. 58 games. It's not a coincidence, man. Um, and Kenny looked confident and, you know, they, they set up the inside stuff with the perimeter run early. That was great. And then I love just his confidence to rip the ball over the middle of the field. 
but also, you know, we talk about Fryermuth, the seams. Maybe the most exciting thing for me, if you're the Steelers, is watching him rip the ball outside the numbers. Um, you know, he had two really nice balls outside the numbers, one to Pickens, one to Johnson. He also had that touchdown on the red zone that they should have thrown the review flag on. But I thought this was a big positive step in the right direction. It actually makes them not just a, oh, they're a footnote, they're in the playoffs. They can win a playoff game if they play like that offensively. Do you, if you're T.J. Watt, um, pull aside Deontay Johnson when he just watched the ball ripped loose and walked away from it thinking it was an incomplete pass? What do you make of that one, Chris? It's a bad look. I mean, you know, I don't want to hammer the guy. The one, the one thing, you, you got to have better effort than that, right? Balls on the ground, maybe the whole thing. But um, the one thing that continues to frustrate me as I pull for the, the Steelers is it seems like him and Kenny aren't on the same page a lot of the time and you know whether it's you know breaking a choice right right off the a different way than kenny thinks you're gonna break it off or drops or you know penalties um i i think that's one connection they could get a lot out of now maybe the coordinator changes maybe it's a you know it's a thing with the vibe in the locker room with some of the guys and maybe his vibe improves or maybe it's just him and kenny getting in there and, and meeting every day one-on-one -on -one because he's a really good player when he's on they could use him down the stretch chris who's on your pod who's on your show what do you got for me what do you got that is a great question i know for <laughs> sure we're going live in okay. uh in about 30 minutes with my brother kyle and okay. uh and 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 dr fax we got a lot to talk about so uh it's crunch time these 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 uh these shows feel like playoff shows I man bet. you know and it's and is kyle as excited about oregon as i am about my alma mater Chris? You should be excited, man. I mean, this is this is awesome for you guys, dude. I'm yeah. really happy for you. Thank and I'm you. not even going to Chris. Thank you. I'm not even going to let my w weekend in college football ruin your we weekend in college football. How could it? But Virginia Tech just stomped us like they always do, like yeah. 49 to 17. I got a community service award in the third quarter. Okay, so so they had to run me out there. The score is 48 oh. to 17. Were you, so you had a better weekend than me when it comes to rivalry football. So were you the one who turned the sprinklers on Virginia Tech when they went out on the field after the game to take team photos to commemorate? That, Did you that's turn the one sprinklers of the on? That's one Did of the I? best things we've done in in 20 years of losing this Commonwealth <laughs> Cup. Um, some people call it petty, but what do you want us to do, man? Well, I mean, they weren't. Oh, no, no, maybe they were set on a timer, right, Chris? They could have been set on a timer. Could and, you know, been. Tech took advantage. They got a really cool picture on it. Off. They're like, yeah, they're all sitting there in the sprinkler. They won again. whoop de do You know? <laughs> Maybe you guys you guys should have turned the sprinkler on on Ohio State over the years. But oh, now, no, no, you don't no. have to worry about it. Best turnabout is the last three years, sir. It's the last yeah. three years. That's the it's best awesome turnabout. For you guys. Certainly yeah. sending Ryan Day to Texas a &M Maybe. All right, Chris. Thank you, sir. Good to see you. Thank you, Rich. You got yeah. a green light pod Great with life. chris and kyle long everyone should check it out it will be live on their youtube page shortly and then of course wherever you get your podcast catch the rich eisen show every single day on the roku channel 12 to 3 eastern for free